you call, Miss Brown. Thank you. Crowder's medical crew. Dr. Crowder's isn't in yet. He's at the hospital. I'd like to believe him. All the while. Call for Dr. Gleason. Thank you. Hello, Josie. Yeah, that was Mrs. Duet Courtney. You see, every week on the road, the doctor whittles something out of her every season. Oh, see how she can walk around without rattling. Wait a minute. Travis Medical Group. Dr. Travis isn't in yet. I can speak to Miss Brown, his secretary. Hold on a while. That's not a... I'd like to see Dr. Travis. But Dr. Travis isn't in yet. But you can see Miss Brown, his secretary. The office right over there. Thank you. Hello, Josie. Yeah, no, I don't got with him anymore. He thinks because you work in a doctor's office, you should know all the answers. Yeah, and the things he wants to talk to me about. I just say, if you want to find out, I want to get married. Wait a minute. Yes, I'd like to see Dr. Travers. Is the doctor expecting you? No. Well, his afternoon is all filled. I don't think he'll be able to see you. Oh. I came all the way in from Riverdale. If I waited, do you think he'd see me? Did some other physician send you to Dr. Travers? Oh, no. I came because I'd been very ill, and they told me Dr. Travers was the only one who might be able to do something for me. Oh. Well, may I have your name, please? Mrs. Carroll. You wait. I'll see what I can do. Please. Travis Michael Roo. Dr. Travis? Yes, I think he has left the hospital. We're expecting him any minute. Shall I have him call on you? Thank you. Good afternoon, Helen. Good afternoon, Dr. Travis. Oh, Mrs. DeVore. Oh, Mrs. Stoddard Lecure. Good afternoon, Doctor. I've seen you in just a very few moments. Good afternoon, Doctor. Hello, Brownie. Hold back those robust things a little, will you, please? Yes, I will. Ah. We're tired of the hospital this morning. Three kidneys, a gallbladder, two hernias, and a tonsillectomy. You did have a day of Uh, Miss Mann has called yet? Not yet, Doctor. Try our house, will you, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. Miss Mann, please. What's on the program for today? Every minute is filled, Doctor. 3.45, you have a consultation with Dr. Cook. Tonight, you have a lecture before the County Medical Society. Not tonight, Brownie. Postpone it. We've postponed it twice, Doctor. We'll postpone it again. No engagements for tonight. This is my night. You know what day this is, don't you? Yes, yes Doctor. Wednesday the 14th. Your birthday, patient. Thank you. Miss Mallory, please. Dr. Thomas calling. Oh, thank you. Miss Manny's maid says she's left for town. We'll call you later on. Good. She's remembered. I'll tell you what. Get her a nice corsage. Gardenia with some violet. Get something very nice. We'll have it here when she arrives. All right, Doctor. Uh, now, now for the victims. Well, Mrs. Phillips wants a general examination. Well, she generally does. What she needs is a mental examination. Mrs. Fry. She thinks she's going to be a mother. She's been thinking that for the last ten years. Mrs. DeVore. Oh, now, now, don't tell me. Let me guess. That woman has invented every malady, male and female, in the encyclopedia. Good heavens, Brownie. There's so much real sickness in the world. If it wasn't for my charity patients, I'd forget how to practice medicine. If it wasn't for the wealthy ones, I couldn't afford to treat the poor. All ready, Miss Van Dyke? Yes, Doctor. Mrs. Cafe is all ready for you. I've been waiting so long, Doctor. I thought you'd never get here. I really was afraid I might catch cold. <laughs> I'm only going to look at the patient's tonsils, Miss Van Dyke. I did want some of your time today, Doctor. You're always so busy, and there's some things I'd like to talk to you about alone. If we could privately. <laughs> You're so understanding, Doctor, and so considerate. I never feel the least embarrassed when I'm with you. I feel as if I'd known you a long, long... Say, ah. Uh... Uh... May I come in? Oh, Judge Phil. Hello, Bill. Michael in. He's always in you, Judge. He's out. It was just the same to you, my dear. Would you squeeze me in? I don't like that word cut when I'm in the doctor's office. <laughs> just a moment, Judge. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Judge Phil's doctor. Hello, Michael. <laughs> Are you all for of sin? What are you doing here? Just bored, Michael. Always come to see you when I'm bored. Nice place for relaxation, this. Better give you an anesthetic. No, thanks, Michael. Just talk to me and I'll go to sleep. Oh, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> now. 
Now what's on your mind? How about having dinner with me tonight at the club? No, not tonight. I have something important on. That reminds me. Hello, get me with us. Michael, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You work too beastly hard. You need some fun. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello, with us? Uh, yes, I just wanted to check up with you. Now, let's see. Uh, you can start with uh, caviar and hors d'oeuvres, avocado salad, hearts of palm, Millicent Supreme soup, Mountain Brook trout, rest of capon, cold lobster. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. Plenty of fresh vegetables. And for dessert, uh, French ice cream, petit four, bella piazza cheese, Turkish coffee. All right. Don't overlook anything else. Thank you. Are you planning a diet for someone, Michael? No, a surprise. <laughs> you know what night this is, don't you? Certainly. Wednesday the 14th. September the 14th. Your birthday. Yes. Felicitations, old man. <laughs> Thanks very much. You better stop having birthdays, so you'll be as old as I am. <laughs> and Diane won't want you. Ah, that's why the menu. Little dinner at my place tonight, just Diane and myself. Charming girl. But I don't quite see her as ornamenting your family fireside. Too confined for her feverish social activities. You're wrong, Barry. It's not her fault. I have so damn much work in my hands that she has to occupy her time with social engagements and such nonsense. No, we don't see nearly enough of each other. But this, this is our night. I'm glad you're taking a night off. What you really need is a good rest and a restorative tonic. Speaking of tonics, have you been taking your medicine? Please, Michael. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> I'll drop in any time. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, who's next? This is Donna Lecure. All right, send her in. I'm calling for Dr. Travers. He won't be able to knock you tonight at the County Medical Board. He's awfully sorry. You'll have to postpone it. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, Josie. Hey, I'm signing off soon. Yeah. Why don't you call me up sometime? Oh, Miss Brown! Get a glass of water, Helen. All Do you feel better now? I'll be all right in a minute. I'm sorry to give you so much trouble. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. The doctor will see you shortly. Thank you. Put this behind your head. I'm very happy the operation was so successful, Mrs. Dean. There's only one thing I'm worried about now, doctor. You know, what's that? I must owe you so much money. Have you received a bill yet? No, Doctor. But I couldn't pay you anything at this time. It's all right, Mrs. Dean. Wait till you receive a bill, and then we'll discuss it. Thank you again, Doctor. Right, all right. Good day. Good day. Goodbye, Mrs. Dean. Bye. Oh, Brownie. What are we charging Mrs. DeWitt Courtney for our last operation? $1,500. Make it 2,000, Mark, Mrs. Dean, paid in full. Yes, Doctor. Oh, heard from Miss Manners yet? Not yet. Well, are we through for the day? No, there's one more patient. Who's that? A Mrs. Carroll. She didn't have an appointment. New patient? Charity, I think. Charity. All right, bring her in. Drive in medical room. Dr. Myers. Hello, Myers. The doctor will see you now, Mrs. Carroll. How do you do, Miss Manners? Hello, Helen. Is the doctor busy? I don't think so. How do you do, Miss Manners? The doctor's expecting you. Oh, thank you. Go right in. You know my brother Richard, don't you? Yes, I do. How do you do, Mr. Manners? Hello. I'm sorry. This will only take a few minutes. Then the doctor will see you. Hello, Michael. Diane. Gosh, I'm glad you got here. Hello, Dick. Hello, Michael. Oh, this makes my day complete, fellow citizens. This is one of the happiest days of my young life. Come on, let's sit down. Let's oh, Michael, I'd like to use the phone. Well, sure, go right ahead. If you don't mind, I'll use the phone in Miss Brown's office. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Diplomatic rascal. He knew I'd want to be alone with you. I'm worried about him, Michael. Dick? What's the matter with him? He won't tell me, but he's nervous and irritable. Well, send him in for an examination. 
Not physical, Michael. Playing on his mind. Oh, some kid worry. Let's forget about it. Now, come on, sit down. Now, I have a big surprise for you. A surprise? Mm -hmm. Oh, how lovely. What is it? Well, if I were to tell you, it wouldn't be a surprise. Shall I close my eyes and count ten? If you do, I'll kiss you again. Why, Michael, you're absolutely romantic today. Why not? You know what day this is, don't you? Why, yes, it's uh, Wednesday the 14th. Mm -hmm. September the 14th. Yes, and it must be nearly six o'clock, and I'm taking 6.30 for Bar Harbor. Tonight? Yes, don't you remember I told you Mrs. Holbrook was giving a house party for the Countess of Kent? Oh. I must have forgotten. What's the matter, Michael? You look positively gloomy. I wanted you to be with me tonight. Sentimental goose. Tell me, what's the surprise? Oh, never mind. That'll keep you get back. Diane, let's try to be more together. I'll cut down on my work, and you needn't make so many engagements. Well, can't you pass this one up and stay here? Oh, you know my social contacts are very necessary. And to both of us, if I'm going to be Mrs. Michael Travers, wife of the prominent surgeon. Well, if you were my wife, I wouldn't let you go. Oh, Michael, you have your work. You must give your time to it. And I have my position to fill. I can't just get stagnant and grow old. Oh, yes, the years do go around, don't they? Oh, you're horrid. You're going to spoil my whole trip if I have to remember that long, doleful face of yours. Well, let's forget about it. I was feeling a bit lonesome. Sorry for myself, I guess. May I take you to the station? No, Dick will do that. That's why I brought him along. But you will talk to him, won't you? Oh, it's probably some little jam at school. I was in a thousand when I was his age. He'll be all right. No, oh, I'm afraid this is more serious. He won't tell me anything about it. Well, I'll talk to him gladly if you think he'll listen to me. Of course he will. He's very fond of you. Oh, must be off. Goodbye. Well, I'll try and see you later. No, no, please. Please don't do that. I'll call you back later. Come along, Dick. We must rush. Oh, drop in and have a chat with me tomorrow, will you, Dick? I want to make some complaints about that big sister of yours. Thanks, do that. Yes, drop in often so you can give me some reports when I get back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, are we through with the day? No. The patient I spoke to you about is still waiting. Good heavens, Brownie. I'm only human. I'm not a machine. Tell her to come back tomorrow. Besides, this is way after office hours. Oh, doctor. This woman is really ill. Won't you please see her? All right, then. Let's get it over with. Send her in. Thank you, doctor. You may come in now, Mrs. Carroll. Miss Van Dyke, if she hasn't left. In the surgery, hurry. Cardiac failure. How long has she been waiting? Since about two o'clock. Why didn't you let me know? Couldn't you see that she was sick? But, Doctor, you were all tied up. With what? Tied up with what? With that bunch of hypochondriacs? Well, there isn't a real ailment in the whole lot of them. If I'd only known sooner... Oh, well, there's nothing to be done about it now. Shall I call the coroner? Yes, sir. Tell him to remove the body. I wonder if you'd mind... Not a bit, Doctor. I'll take care of everything. Thanks, Brownie. Were you looking for someone? Yes. I was looking for my mother. Did she come here? Yes, sir. I came with her. She told me to wait downstairs so I wouldn't get in the way. But I waited so long it got dark and I got scared. I, I know she must be here because 
This is her bag. I'd like to wait if you don't mind. What's your name? Judy. Judy Carroll. Has your mother been sick very long? Well, she didn't say much about it, but I know she was, because some days she couldn't even go to work. Where's your father, Judy? Oh, he died a long time ago. It's just mom's and me. Well, uh, well, your mother has been quite ill. I had to send her away for a good rest. To a hospital? Yes. Yes, to a hospital. Oh, can I go see her? Oh, no, not yet. You see, we mustn't disturb her. Huh. It's funny she went away without seeing me. Well, well, you see, I didn't give her much time. We were going to have such a nice time. We were going to a real restaurant in the picture. You know what day this is? Oh, yes. Yes, Wednesday the 14th. It's my birthday. Mums wouldn't forget. Oh, doctor. Yes? It's the coroner. Oh, uh, you mean the hospital about uh, Mrs. Carroll? Well, tell them that I want them to do all they can for her and make her comfortable. I have her daughter here with me now. Do you understand? Yes, doctor. Will she be all right? I'm sure she will. How old are you? I'm 14, this birthday. That's quite a coincidence. What is? It's my birthday, too. Is it? Yes. How oh, my. How old are you? <laughs> I'm quite old, Judy. I'm afraid I've stagnated. What do you mean? Well, that means you get into a rut. And people sort of forget about you. Oh, people always remember you on your birthday. Yes, when you're 14. But you mustn't forget about your birthday. Uh, your mother wouldn't want you to miss your party. But I can't go now. Why, of course you can. I know where there's a swell birthday party just waiting for somebody with a birthday. Do you think Mom's would want me to go? I'm sure she would. Then maybe she'll forgive me for sending her away so soon. Well, I'd like to go. I've got him a good dress and I fix my fingernails and shine my shoes. I got a hole in my stocking. Oh. But I don't think it will show. I know. I'll put some ink on it. Yeah, that's right. You know, Mom's would want me to look nice. Yes. Nice here. Nicer than where we live. Is it? Oh, yes. We haven't got any elevator. We have to walk up. We have to put 25 cents in the gas meter. If we haven't got 25 cents, we don't have any gas. You don't do, have to do that here, do you? I don't know. No. But we have a nice room downstairs where we do our washing. But you've got to be careful the way you hang your clothes, because somebody might swipe them. Uh, and Mrs. Nelford, she's our landlady. She's nice, too, when you pay your rent rates. Right but she says she's only a poor lady, too, and she can't afford to have any chips living in the house. And I beg pardon. Uh, your dinner is served, sir. Oh. Are you ready, Miss Judy? Well, uh, I'd like to wash my hands. Uh, with us, uh, Miss Judy would like to wash her hands. Uh, yes, sir. This way, miss. Oh, Withers. Yes, sir. Uh, we haven't a birthday cake. No birthday party is complete without a cake, is it? Uh, no, sir. All right, then get one. Where, sir? Downstairs, they'll fix up some sort of a cake. Oh, and I, um, I want 14 candles on it. 14 candles for you, sir? Uh, no reflections, please. Uh, it's for Miss Judy. And uh, now, uh, I want it inscribed. Inscribed, sir? Uh, yes, they squeeze sugar of some sort on top of it. Uh, just say, uh, birthday greetings to Judy. J-U-D-Y. That's my name. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's what I was just telling Withers. Oh, shall I serve, sir? Please. Miss Judy? Oh, oh, supper. Oh, yes, supper. <laughs> the lady? You wouldn't pull it, would you? Oh, no. Does Mr. Withers live here, too? Yes, Withers lives here all the time. 
What's his first name? Withers. Withers Withers? Is that the only name he's got? <laughs> no, I believe he was christened Wesley Luther Cavendish Withers. Oh, I guess I'd just better call him Mr. Withers. <laughs> yes, maybe you'd better call me Uncle Michael. All right, Uncle Michael. It's pretty. Perhaps Miss Judy would rather have you serve her with us. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. It was crooked. Well, yes, miss. Well, thank you, miss. Withers, be sure you don't overlook the dessert. Yes, sir. I'll see to it right away, sir. We want a birthday cake. Yes, a birthday cake. Fourteen candles. Yes, fourteen. We want it inscribed. Yes, inscribed. You know, squeeze on the top of it. No, I didn't say sneeze. I said squeeze. My word, write on it. Yes, as follows. Birthday greetings to Judy. Judy. J-U-D-Y. My word. J-U-D-Y. Listen. J as in January. Yes, January. U as in human. Human. H-U-M-A-N. My word, can't you understand English? H-U-M-A-N, human. Now, now, listen. H as in os, O as in omelet, R as in raspberry, you blighter. No, no, her name's Judy. Judy! Oh, nuts. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 candles. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Why, it's the nicest cake I ever saw. Did you make it, Mr. Withers? I know, miss. Well, then I wonder how my name got on it. I've been wondering about that too, miss. Can I make a wish? Oh, yes. Remember, you've got to blow the candles all out at once. If I do, will my wish come true? I think perhaps it will, yes. She did it with us. <laughs> yes, sir. What did you wish for, dear? I wish that Mommy's would get better very soon. Judy, if your wish wouldn't come true, would you promise to be very brave? Now, come along. We cut our cake yet. It's very nice. Could we wait till after? I don't think I want any right now. Of course. Withers. Yes, sir. Miss uh, Judy wants you to save her cake. Yes, sir. Uh, shall I save the candles too, sir? Yes, save the candles too. And by the way, Miss uh, Judy's going to stay here with us overnight. Here, sir? Yes. You can get a cot downstairs, can't you? Well, yes, sir. I, I think so, sir. Very well, and she'll use your room. Uh, we'll make other arrangements tomorrow. You may serve the coffee in the living room. Very good, sir. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? Don't you like it? It's upside down. <laughs> often wondered about that myself. Now, with us. Upside uh, down. I don't really try it upside down, sir. And I've tried it downside up, sir. But I think it really looks better uh, this way, sir. Oh, yes, that's a decided improvement. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Not at all. Uh, is that all, sir? That's all. Oh, Mr. Withers, can I help you wash the dishes? I don't wash the dishes, oh. miss. A coffee, Judy? No, to keep you awake. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's beautiful. Is she your wife? No, dear. What's her name? 
Diane. Diane Manners. You'll never learn really. Learn. Well, I'll phone for you, Miss Manners. Sorry, I won't be a moment. You should have finessed your queen. If I had, I'd have gone down too. You don't think you get your partner's points. I'd like to see some points on the scorecard. Hello? Hello? Oh, of course I'm surprised. Oh, possibly the end of next week. I don't quite understand. Don't talk so fast. Say you have a young lady staying at your apartment? Yes. Her name is Judy. Of course I like her. Nice of you to have called, dear. Yes, of course I do. Goodbye. Hello, long distance. Will you please call? 360? Thank you. All right, Michael. And do you think Diane will be amenable? Well, certainly. She thinks it's splendid. A Diane will... You love Judy. Why shouldn't you? What do you propose to do, adopt her? Perhaps. You see, she doesn't know about her mother yet. She'll have to know soon. I depend on Diane for that. Diane will be pleased with that. Diane will understand. What about your going away? Your trip to Europe to spread this new technique of heart valve operation. Will she fit into that? I may not go, Barry. Don't be a fool. Think of the prestige. It'll mean every honor and award in Europe. Excuse me, Doctor. What is it to us, Miss Judy? Oh, bring her right in. There you are, Barry. Now you'll meet her. Judy! Hello, Uncle Michael. Mr. Withers told me to come show you my nice new clothes. Good. Aren't they pretty? Oh, I think they're very pretty. Do you like them? Oh, yes. Oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, this is Mr. Phelps, an old friend of ours. Barry, this is Judy. How do you do, Miss Judy? Great to meet you. Do you really think they're nice, Uncle Mike? Oh, I think they're perfectly stunning. I don't know where Willis got such wonderful clothes. Do you think my clothes are pretty? Very pretty, my dear. But not so pretty as the little lady who's wearing them. There's the tonic you ordered, Barry. <laughs> oh, are you a doctor? No, I'm a lawyer. There's a lady who insists on seeing you, doctor. She said to mention the name of Richard Manners. Oh, you better have a wait. She insists, doctor. I'm running along. Oh, uh, no, no, Barry, wait just a minute. Uh, Judy will go with you. Uh, Judy, run along with Mr. Phelps. Maybe he'll take you to a picture. Now, Michael, you know I don't win for pictures. Don't even like Mickey Mouse. Oh, Mickey Mouse? Do you happen to know where one's playing? Oh, sure. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle Michael. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, uh, haven't you forgotten something? Oh. <laughs> oh, and don't forget your purse. Thanks for the nice new clothes, Uncle Michael. I'm glad you like them. Goodbye. 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 Bye, Barry. Uh, you may have the lady come in now. Right this way, please. Uh, won't you sit down? Did you want to see me professionally? That all depends upon whether you want to handle Mike. You'll have to be more explicit. You're engaged to Miss Diane Manners, aren't well, you? Is, well, what has Miss Manners to do with it? She's Dick Manor's sister, and he has a lot to do with it. Oh, Dick. careful of my trunk, won't you? And when you put it on the train, tell the conductor to take it off at the Court Marlboro School for Girls and ask him please not to forget because it's got all my clothes in. Oh, Uncle Loco! I'm so glad you got here. I was afraid I'd have to go away without seeing you and I wouldn't want to do that. Oh. Tell them to take all the time they want. This thing only weighs two ton. Don't be familiar with your betters, my man. 
Miss Judy Carroll of the Marlboro School. Sounds sort of high hat, doesn't it? Sounds growing up. <laughs> well, well, hello, dear. Hello, Beth. Right, but we've very little time. I want to stop all night at Longview. Come along, Judy. We'll hurry. All right, Miss Diane. It's nice of Miss Diane to take me all the way to school in an automobile. Miss Diane is the most wonderful woman in all the world, dear. Me too, Uncle Michael. You too, Judy. Well, why don't you come with us? Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't. You see, I have some business to settle with Mr. Phelps, and then I must get back to the office. Judy, dear. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, Uncle Michael. Goodbye, dear. Come on, Diane. Well, when do you expect to return, Diane? Oh, sometime next week. I'm going to finish my visit with Sally Holbrook. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Come along, Judy. Goodbye, Diane. Goodbye, Diane. Goodbye, Mr. Phelps. Goodbye, dear. I wanted the last kiss, Uncle Michael. Thank you, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Michael, the next farewell will be to you at the boat. I'm going to miss that kid, Mary. Travers Medical Group. Dr. Travers is in Europe. Dr. Gleason is taking his patients. Hold the wire. Hello, Josie. Yes, we're going to be married next summer. Well, he thinks that then we'll have enough money to pay for the furniture. Yeah, wait a minute. Travers Medical Group. Dr. Travers is still in Europe. No, we don't know when he'll be back. Let you talk to Miss Brown. Hello, Josie. We have the furniture in. Dr. Gleason, hold the wire. Hello, George. Did you give the baby his carrots and spinach for lunch? And don't forget his orange juice. And be sure he has his sun bath. Drive his medical room. Dr. Gleason, he's at the hospital. Sorry. Hello, Helen. Oh, Dr. Travers. We didn't expect you back so soon. Glad to see you, Helen. Oh, I'm awfully glad to see you. Travis <laughs> medical room. Hello, Brownie. Oh, you told me. How's everything? Splendid. I received your cable, but didn't expect it until later on in the day. No, both doctor earlier. Uh, anybody been using this office? Dr. Gleason, but he's at the hospital now. <laughs> glad to see you, Brownie. Hello, Miss Van Dyke. Why, Dr. Travers, I'm so glad to see you. I could almost kiss you. Well, why don't you? Oh, Doctor. <laughs> well, it's good to have you around here. It seems more homelike. Thank you, Doctor. You too. Yes. We're all very proud of you, Doctor. Your success is phenomenal. Hard work, Brownie. I wonder if it was worth it. I think it was, Doctor. Why, your mail arrived in truckloads. We've been besieged with offers for lecture tours. Now, Brownie, if you mention work to me, I'll, I'll have to toss you out of the window. Yes, Doctor. Anything I can do for you now? No, no. I'm just glad to be home. Glad to be in the old offices again. Diane! Michael! Oh, oh. oh look divine! Glad to be back. Glad to have me back? Oh, of course I am. Oh, come on, let's sit down. I want to chat with you. I'm so sorry I missed you at the boat. But you, Doctor, had a schedule. I saw Withers at the customs. That's how I happened to know you were here. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. But where's Judy? Oh, at school. School? Oh. Oh, she wanted to come. There was graduation only two weeks off. I didn't think it advisable. <laughs> oh, I'm so anxious to see her. How does she look? Well, I'll bet you've grown, hasn't she? Oh, perhaps Dick will go to school and bring her down here over the weekend. Dick? Yes, they see quite a lot of each other. I think he has a crush on her. Judy? Yes. And your homecoming is not to interfere with any of her studies, Michael. After all, she's your ward and graduate with the highest honor. <laughs> You'll have nothing but prize winners, will you, Judy? Oh, you're my answer to that. I'm so proud of you, Michael. I'm delirious. Well, if that's settled, I don't want to win any other prize. <laughs> oh, Michael, I've arranged to have your old suite of rooms and everything is prepared. Good. Oh, yes, I told Widow you wouldn't be in this evening because we're dining with the French Council and then we're going to the opera. Tonight? Oh, Michael, please, just this one for me. Don't so, it really wasn't my fault. But I'm so proud of you. I want to show you all. And I know you have a million things to do. And so the sooner I leave, the sooner I'll get back. Goodbye, darling. I'll pick you up at 7.30. I'll be waiting for you. And don't be late, will you, dear? I won't. Good night, darling. So long. Well, oh, Brownie. Yes, Doctor. How long was I away? Three years and four months. 
I just wanted to make sure. Thanks. Ah, oh, seems good to get back home with us. Miss Manners has arranged everything. Well, Miss Manners is a very efficient person. If she'd been on Hindenburg's side, it might have been a different war. Was she in the war, sir? <laughs> All right, let it go. Let it go. Ah. Am I what the doctor ordered? Judy! Take it like a man, Uncle Michael. Here I come. Oh, Judy. Uncle Michael. Oh, let, let me look at you. Are you the same funny little kid? The same old Judy, all dressed up in cellophane. I wanted to surprise you. Well, you surely did. How'd you get away from school? It'd take more than a penitentiary to hold me when you're arriving. <laughs> What's all this graduating business? Oh, you've seen the major. The major? <laughs> That's what Horatio calls Diane. Horatio? That's what I call Dick. Uh -huh. Every time he comes down to school to see me, I see him standing at the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you and Dick must be seeing a great deal of each other. Oh, he's a swell age, Uncle Michael. He does heaps of nice things for me. But he's going to miss me now that you're back. I still come first? Before anybody in the world. Say, I think we have a swell excuse for a celebration. How about you taking me to dinner and a show tonight? Uh-uh, get a better offer. The French Consul and the Opera. The Major? Mm -hmm. How that woman does love spinach. <laughs> big problem, sir. Yeah. Mr. Manners is downstairs, sir. Oh, Dick, oh, send him up. I know. Who'll phone the Major asking about me? The Major will give me. Uh-uh-uh. Glad to see you back, Michael. It's been a long time. You bet it has. Thanks, Dick. So the culprit is here. I thought I'd find it with you, Michael. Did the school phone? Uh-huh. Did they speak to the Major? The Major was out. I grabbed the call and started looking for you, funny face. You're a pal, Horatio. The Major would have had me shot at sunrise. In two weeks, summer vacation. Then we'll have fun, Uncle Michael. That's going to be my summer vacation. Don't you think I'd better drive her back to school, Michael? If the Major finds out. I knew you'd think of that, you old killjoy. Oh, come, come now. I've got to get dressed. You better get out of here, all of you, or I'll the Major. Come up and see me at school next Sunday, will you, Uncle Michael? Let's go, Judy. A girl's school is hardly a safe place for a bachelor. Have the Major chaperone you. I'll wear a false face and then nobody will know me. Come borrow Dick. He got his out of the funny face. Come on. <laughs> ah. Happy landing. Summer vacation. Goodbye, Uncle Michael. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye, Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye Miss Judy. Come on. Come on. I decided to make it September. We'll honeymoon abroad. London and Paris for the opera season. And then the Riviera. Shall we go to Vienna? Huh? Or what? Uh... Oh, it wasn't important. Oh. My great nose died, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody knows how I got it. Woo! I can't realize it's the same duty. She seems so grown up. She's 18, Michael. I'm so anxious to meet all your friends abroad. Oh, it'll be thrilling for me, Michael. The time I've waited for our achievement. Perhaps we've missed something more important. I wonder if youth hasn't passed us by. I don't feel a day over 90. Please be more considerate when you include me in your remarks. Hello, Why don't you tell Michael about our engagement? Oh, let's wait. He's only been here two weeks. I've hardly had a chance to get acquainted with him myself. Oh, well, you ought to give the Major a chance, too. Every time she wants to talk to him, she has to push you off his lap. Now, don't be like that, Horatio. Nobody will like you. Well, you're not wasting any pen of emotion on me since he got back. I may as well be a blind date. Oh, go ground yourself. You know I like you, too. You used to say you loved me. All right, then, you big lug. I love you. I've had your car brought around, and I'll bring Judy and Dick in with me later. I want my mind. Help me out. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ladies, Aid Society lends a helping hand. I just wanted to see if you could still lift me. 
I'm not getting fat yet, am I? Not any heavier, but much more grown up. I can't help that. That's what you wanted, isn't it? I'm not so sure about that. I've lost something. A certain funny little somebody. You'll never lose me, Uncle Mike. I won't let you. I'd still like to crawl up inside your coat. You're getting a little too big for that. I'm afraid you wouldn't find room. Oh, there'd always be room for me. <laughs> wouldn't there, Uncle Mike? <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> Looks like I'm as welcome around here as a poor relation. Naturally, Judy is thrilled with Michael's return. Oh, what a reputation, Dick. I'm glad you're so broad-minded. Say, Dick, give me my robe, will you? Oh, oh, do I have to go all the way into town to meet that society of graybeards, Diane? Well, I think you should. All right. Well, so long, everybody. See you later. Oh, I thought we were all going in together. Well, we're all going to have dinner together. And I'm going to take you and Dick in with me. Why didn't you tell him about our engagement? I'll have a heart, Dick. I'll tell him tonight. Why, Uncle Mike's forgotten his briefcase. I'll take it to him. Uncle Mike! Hey, funny face. You want to dance? Sure. Let's see the wider. I never heard of it. Well, put your arm around it. Now, hold me tight. Tighter. Wider. Oh. <laughs> They're an ideal match, Judy and Dick. Diane fostered it. And I approve of it. Too soon for Judy to think of that, Barry. Perhaps Judy will have something to say about that herself. <laughs> hey, Judy, why don't you tell Michael about our engagement? What's your hurry? The Major will be taking him off to Europe soon, and I wanted to know about it before he goes. Yes, and she'll keep him there, and I won't see him again until I'm an old hag. I hope you don't. I think, I think you're jealous. I am. <laughs> Would you like me to throw my arms around you and kiss you right here in front of him? That's a good idea. Let's do it. Well, that won't be necessary because I'm going to tell him right now. Good. Uncle Michael, yes? I want to talk to you. I've got secrets. Secrets? Very private, deep, dark secrets? Not so deep, but not so dark, but very private. I've got to see you all by yourself. Excuse us, please. Of course. Hmm, the plot thickens. <laughs> I'll have to look out for your interest, Diane. Big fat ones? Tell me all. You take cold showers, don't you, Uncle Michael? Uh, I love them. <laughs> then you won't mind the shock, will you? Serious? Awfully serious. Dick? Yes. Are you in love with him? Yes. Do you think you're old enough to know? Next to you, I think he's the grandest person in the world. But this is a shock. I can't quite understand it. I've I just come to realize it. I never thought I'd lose you so soon. But you wouldn't be losing me, Uncle Mike. Well, you know how I feel about you. You still love me a little, too? Of course I do. And I love Dick, too. But nobody could ever take your place in my heart. Do I feel enough of your heart to have you obey Uncle Mike, even though it hurt a little? Do whatever you want. Well, then let's forget Dick for a while. You don't want me to marry him? You see, I'd like to get to know you myself. If you were to go out of Uncle Mike's life, there'd be a hole in his heart that nothing else could fill. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you, Uncle Mike. I'll tell you. Judy, Dan said she thought you'd better get your rats on. It's almost time to leave for the theater. Excuse me. What did he say? I expected that. Well, I'm going to talk to him. Please, Dick, don't. Let's forget about it for a while. Forget what? About you and me? Yes. He put that idea on your head. Well, he's not going to get away with it. I'm going to tell him right now. Please, Dick, please. If you really care for me, don't talk to Michael now. Why? Because I don't want you to. You know, Michael, I've never seen your European decoration. Talk them out. <laughs> oh, that's my privilege, Barry. He's my one-man show. You must see them. 
I'll probably have to dust them off, but if you insist on a dress parade, I'll, I'll play hero. <laughs> Gary, if Michael and I leave before September, would you be able to go along with it? Summer would be my only possible chance. Oh, that would be splendid. I wish you'd speak to Michael about it. We could be married quietly and leave almost immediately for Europe. You belong to me. He can't take you away from me. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were here. Judy, I'd like to speak to Dick for a few moments. Uncle Michael, it was my... Please, dear. I have something to say myself, and I'd just as soon say it in front of Judy. You presume too much already. You're not angry with me, are you? No, dear. I don't have to make any explanation. Judy's told you about us. I shall have to insist on your discontinuing any further association with Judy. But why do you object to me? Because you never liked me shouldn't stand between Judy and me. She loves me and I love her. Your opinion can't change that. Why don't you accept it? Oh, that's absurd. Judy's too young. I'd rather not discuss it. Well, I'm going to marry her anyway. But I want to hear what you had to say first. Well, if you insist on my talking, I will. You remember a young lady coming to my offices about three years ago? I expected you'd use that excuse. Well, with that in mind, you don't think I could accept you as a fit companion for Judy, do you? That isn't the real reason, and you know it. Why don't you admit the truth? I know why you don't want me to marry Judy. And if Diane isn't blind, she knows too. It's because you're in love with her yourself. How dare you? Why don't you deny it? You can't. You know you can't. Dick! Judy's waiting for you to take it to the table. Well, But, Diane, I... Dick, please. I don't know what you overheard, but I'm willing to excuse Dick and forget it. I'm not asking you to excuse him, Michael. It happens to be the truth. Oh, I knew it from the beginning. I was a coward not to face it sooner. I thought this moment from the first time I saw Judy in your house. I realized then what might happen. That's why I encouraged romance between her and Dick. I wanted to protect myself. But Judy's only a child, Diane. Don't deceive yourself, Michael. She's a woman, and you're in love with her. That's something I couldn't control. Oh, I'm not blaming you. It was my fault. I was too ambitious. Ambitious for both of us. Now we've waited too long and... and I've lost you. Oh, I'm not sorry for myself, but I am for Dick. Let's forget what's been said. That wouldn't be easy, Michael. A woman can't live without her pride. And I've made mine a part of yours. Now I'm taking it back. You'll be very happy with Judy. And what you've been to me, I can always remember. Goodbye, Michael. Diane! No, Michael. Please, Dick. Think of me. It's the only time I've ever disobeyed Uncle Mike. He asked me never to see you again. But I couldn't let us separate that way. We don't have to separate if you really love me. You do, don't you? Yes, Dick, I do. Then why do we have to consider him? We can run away and get married. But I couldn't do that to Mike, Dick. Think of all he's done for me. Wait a while. Maybe he'll change his mind. There's not a chance of him doing that. You've got to marry me now. You've got to. Please don't ask me to, Dick. I couldn't. Why? Because you think more of him than you do of me. No. Because he believes in me and trusts me. Yes. And because he's in love with you. What do you mean? He doesn't look on you as a kid anymore. He wants you for himself. I should never have said that, Dick. Because if Michael loves me that way... I'm married. I guess I'm a fool to ever think you love me. All right, if you want him, I'll take you to him quicker than you ever got anywhere in your life.
What's your diagnosis, Doctor? An angel hemorrhage. Can you use an anesthetic? No, she's unconscious. Just one chance in a thousand, Doctor. That's the one I'm taking. What's her condition? Blood pressure going down, pulse becoming rapid. Condition bad. Do you think she'll be all right, Diane? I don't know, dear. She was badly hurt. It was all my fault. I was crazy. I didn't know what I was doing. Well, now you're nervous. You go downstairs and wait. Run along now. All right, Diane. Patient's becoming cyanotic. Give her stimulants. Give her all the strychnine she can stand. She can't last long. Oxygen. Now, now, you, you mustn't talk. You must rest. Will you recover, Michael? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so glad for your sake. May I see her? Yes, but uh, please be brief. Biddy, you look beautiful. Travers will be proud of you. I hope so. He's the most wonderful man in the world. I'd rather have him proud of me than anything else I know. You look remarkable, sir. Thanks, Withers. I don't feel a day over 20. Seeing as but yesterday that she had a birthday cake with 14 candles. Yes, sir. And I've still got those candles. <laughs> Everything all ready? Yes, sir. And they're all waiting. All right, let's go. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? I would. Wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? 